What's going on, guys? Coach Jorge coming at you with a very important topic here. The topic at hand is intensity, okay? Intensity can be broken down into two different brackets. Depending on what you're aspiring to achieve in your program, whether it's a HIT exercise or resistance training exercise, HIT meaning in high intense interval training, resistance training just basically meaning weight training, your basic weight training. Intensity can mean two different things. Okay. Um, now, as we revisit HIT exercises, the main thing to remember is that this is a high intensity interval training exercise. Now, what does that mean? That means that typically this workout is less than 30 minutes. Okay. So you have less than, you have a very short period of time to get as much work in as possible. This means you have minimal rest, okay? So you're gonna feel tired, you're gonna feel exhausted, and you're gonna have to push the envelope. Meaning you're gonna have to explode through the movements. Sometimes you'll get an AMRAP, as many reps as possible within a short time period. Sometimes you may get a uh, rep range of 15 reps, followed by another 15 reps, followed by another 15 reps, okay? The idea here is that you're working fast, you're working diligently, and you're trying to get as many reps as possible. You're trying to really push the envelope. You're trying to break through the bear, the mentor, mental barrier that you may have of saying, I can't go more, I can't go more, but you must, okay? The next part about this is the resistance training, okay? Resistance training is a little different, okay? This is your basic weight training. Your coach may have a different goal in mind. Perhaps you're strength training. Perhaps you're pursuing some sort of hypertrophy. The difference between those two is strength training, you don't really care about size. You don't really care about appearance. Your main priority is to get as strong as possible. Hypertrophy is a little different. You don't really care about pushing 1,000 pounds. Your main priority is really getting bigger and looking better. Both of these can be measured by the rated perceived exertion, okay? Now, what does this mean? This is an RPE scale. For a HIT exercise, you want to use the Borg RPE scale, which is somewhere between 6 and 20. This is the original RPE scale, okay? Why is it 6 to 20? Well, because you multiply wherever you may land by 10, and that should determine how many beats per minute you're looking to achieve, okay? So for the target for a HIIT exercise, an RPE of 12 to 17, meaning 120 to 170 beats per minute is the goal. That is the optimal range. Now, why is this? Because if you're doing a HIIT exercise, chances are your coach really wants you to push the envelope. Your coach really wants you to burn that fat, gain that muscle, really wants to prioritize your conditioning, okay? So if you're not pushing the envelope, if you're going too slow, you're probably, let's say you have an AMRAP, and again, as many reps as possible, for squats within a minute, you only get two in. It's a pretty shitty hit exercise, to be honest with you. So the goal there would probably be to get one every second. Now, of course, that's probably not possible. It's depending on your build, depending on multiple different factors. But the goal there is to get as many reps as possible, really get that lactic acid buildup, really go towards burnout, but really push that envelope. That area of, damn, I want to give up, but I'm not going to, is where the magic happens. Now, how do you know? whether you're hitting that RPE of 12 to 17. You can do two ways of reaching that goal, that range goal, okay? Your first is very simple. Get an Apple Watch, get a Fitbit, get a Polar Watch, get anything that can measure your heart, your beats per minute, anything. 
that would be the most obvious and probably the easiest way of determining whether you're hitting a RP of seven or an RP of 18. Okay. Now, if you don't have an Apple watch, you don't have a Fitbit, you don't have a Polar watch, you can use this scale. Okay. If you're somewhere between RP six or seven, meaning you're somewhere between 60 to 70 beats per minute, this depends on the person's condition. Okay. Keep that in mind. This depends on a person's athletic build. You're probably at rest. You're probably just going about your day. This is a really healthy individual, by the way. This is just an example individual. If you're somewhere between 8 to 11, meaning 880 to 110 beats per minute, you're probably warming up. Now, one of the easiest, easiest, easiest ways of determining this is just sing the song. I don't know what I've been told. Exercise is getting old. Again, if you could sing a song like that, not a rap song, you know, not like an Eminem song, which requires a lot of breathing, that then you are probably still in the warm up phase. So we use singing as a method to determine your breathing patterns. Okay. Now, if you're somewhere between the 12 to 15 range, that means you're ramping up the intensity. You probably have a little bit of wiggle room to increase the intensity. You could probably talk in between your 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 reps. You could probably talk in between breaks. You know that's a very good metric of determining where you're landing in this six to twenty RP scale. Okay, so the idea here is um, you still are capable of putting together sentences and communicating to someone if you were doing this. So think about it like a sprint. You know, you do one quick sprint, you're probably going to need a second between words to really uh, catch your breath, right? Now, if you're somewhere between 16 and 19, again, 160 to 190 beats per minute, you're really pushing the envelope. You probably find yourself breathing heavy. You probably, if, if you're one of Coach Dan's clients and he's trying to talk to you, you're probably just panting and listening and you're not really responding. This means your blood is pumping. Now, if you're somewhere at 200 beats per minute, you're at maximal effort. Now, the idea is you don't really get here. This, is actually, this might be a little bit concerning. This could be indicative of other uh, underlying issues. Um, but the idea is you don't really want to be at about 20. You really want to be in that, uh, let's say like 14 to 18 range. Okay. That's when you know you're killing it. You're absolutely killing it. If you're anything above a 20, slow down, slow down. That means you're pumping it at 200 beats per minute. And that can be very, very, very concerning. Okay, now this is only applicable to a HIIT exercise. You do not, now this can vary, this can vary on your resistance training, depending on what you're doing. There's so many factors that could play a role in your beats per minute. So do not apply this to maybe like doing squats, like a four by eight, okay? Apply this to maybe you're doing an AMRAP of squats followed by AMRAP of push-ups followed by AMRAP of burpees, okay? Now, if we're doing strictly strength training or if we're doing some sort of hypertrophy, then we're going to use the, now, I'm going to butcher this last name, Tuxure Modified RP Scale, okay? This is a modified RP scale uh, that's often referred to as how many you have left in the tank, meaning the difference between how many reps you have versus how many, what the RP is, equals how many reps you have left in the tank. So for hypothetically speaking, you're doing a four by eight um, and you get to the eighth rep and you feel like you have two more left in the tank, take that two, subtract it out of the 10, it's 10, min 10 minus two, that's an RP of eight, okay? This one's a little bit easier to gauge because odds are you're not really doing five different exercises as a superset, okay? This is probably this is probably utilized for some sort of hypertrophy, some sort of strength training, okay? So how do we gauge this? This one can be a little bit more convoluted. Uh, not as simple because again, we are aiming for a more precise 
RPE. So take your time, read through the slide. Uh, as you'll see, um, just to pull out some examples, a seven and a half, the reps slow down after halfway through the set, but still some gas is left in the tank. You pop, maybe could have done three more reps. Now the difference here is a seven and a half from a seven is a seven. You're like, yeah, I definitely could have done seven. I could have definitely could have done three more reps versus a seven and a half where you're like, mm, I maybe could have done three, maybe would have been two and a half left. Okay. Now remember an RP 10 is a maximal, maximal effort, meaning you grinded it out and you're just thanking God that you had spotters to lift you to, to watch your back because there's a possibility that you maybe wouldn't have gotten that one rep in. Now, again, that's in the consideration that you're doing a one rep max. Let's assume you're doing, let's use the same example, a four by eight. That might be a little more difficult to gauge an RP seven because the first four might've felt easy peasy lemon squeezy, but five, six, seven, eight were a little bit more difficult, okay? So by the time you get to eight and you're supposed to hit an RP seven, then you may have, if you were pushing the envelope, could have hit 11 reps. Yeah, that's one way to gauge it. Now, if you're hitting reps of eight, then the eighth rep was an absolute grinder and you were super duper appreciative of the spotters and you couldn't have done one more, that's an RP 10. So again, this varies because if you had an RP, if you had a one rep max, if you had one rep that you had to accomplish, that differs in terms of gauging. It's a lot easier to gauge and a one rep from a scale of one to 10 because you know whether or not you had a two, three, four or more left in the tank, as opposed to when you get higher in those rep ranges, it becomes a little bit more iffy this is this does not get perfected in your first go so by all means ask your coach ask reassess how you felt watch the video did it move fast did it move slow after the fourth fifth sixth etc rep you know come at it with more of a critical mindset and that's it guys